Uh, why is this JavaScript not working? <sighs> All right, let me just use console log so I can try to debug this thing. You know, there's a lot more you can use to help debug than just console log in JavaScript, right? Wait, really? Tell me more. Let me show you a few things. What's up, everyone? My name is James Kiewick, and I do weekly videos about web development related topics. And if you watch the intro and it resonated with you, then you're in the right place. So as JavaScript developers, we are all guilty of using console.log for everything that we do in terms of trying to debug our code. But there are lots of other tools that you have at your disposable, disposable at your disposal that you can use to make that process even easier. So we'll talk about some of the extra functions on the console object that you can use. Then we'll talk about debugging inside of uh, Chrome and then debugging inside of VS Code as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so I've got open one of the projects from the advent of JS series that my podcast co-host Amy and I created last December. Even though it started last December, you can still access these at any time. So you can go and check it out at advent of JS. You can get the challenges for free and then pay for the solutions. And the challenge that I have open is this password generator, which should display a password based on the link that we defined here and also show you the link, which is not updating. And then uh, be able to choose whether or not we want symbols and numbers and lowercase and et cetera, et cetera. So how do we first figure out what's going on? Well, well, the first thing that you probably know of is inside of your browser, uh, go to inspect and then open up your console and you can start to see any errors that are in here. Now, as you see these errors, you'll get better at this the more JavaScript you write, but these errors are actually typically much more specific than most people give them credit for. So learning how to focus on what the error is actually implying to you and go address the problem from there is actually crucial. So it says uh, one of them is uh, uncaught reference error inputs with two S's is not defined. Not only does it say that, but it also gives me the line number. So now go back to line 30, which is here. Sorry, my line numbers are a little odd because I'm using the Vim extension in VS Code. If you'd like to know more about that, uh, how I'm enjoying it, let me know in the comments. But if we look at uh, this line here, we can see that inputs has two S's, which is probably not what we want. So that told us exactly where to go, saying that that thing is not defined. Now, the other other problem is one, uh, let's go ahead and fix this, is one that uh, is not being updated here is the, uh, this dot, it looks like it's printing like a DOM element to the screen here. And uh, we don't really know why that is. So let's go and look at this. So right now we're getting length from this length input input element. As you can probably imagine, this is a DOM element. So we can start by logging this just to see what this is. So we have to do one of these to trigger this update. So we're saying we're getting the input and not its actual value. One cool thing that you can do that you may not have known is you can take uh, length and then call uh, console.dir instead of log. So console.dir is better for formatting printing of DOM elements. So see now we actually get this DOM element as an object that we can go through and look through all of its properties. So depending on how you want to look at that thing, you have that at your disposal. Now let's go back to our console log and talk about a couple of tricks that we can use for this. So if we are sticking with our console log and we trigger this, notice we just get kind of this DOM element string displayed on the screen. We don't necessarily know what variable that was associated with. So one of the things I will often do is say uh, length is, and then uh, a comma and say the second object here. So you can comma separate your uh, things that you want to log to now associate. Let's see if we can get this to re-trigger. Hey, this is the variable length or, and this is the value of that length variable. Now, there's one way that makes this even easier where you don't have to type out the name of that variable directly. Instead, you can just surround your object or your property, your thing that you want to log out your variable in an object syntax, which will then inherently log it out as an object where it has the key of the variable and then the value of the thing that we're looking at. So this is a good way to get a little bit more information about the thing that you're actually looking at. All right, so there's another function on the console object that we can use for better formatting or readability of arrays and objects. So if we look inside of this character codes map, this is just looking at the code associated with each character that we care about in this application. If we were to log this out, let's do a console log of character codes. Go ahead and save that. You can see it's gonna print this out and it's a little hard to digest. It's just kind of all in line, but if we use the console dot table function instead of log, this will actually give us a little bit better representation of this as a table. So you see the keys and then the values associated with them kind of broken out here. So you can use this for both arrays and objects. Arrays are actually objects behind the scenes, but uh, for this conversation, it helps to print out for both. 
So another function on the console object is the assert. And so let's give an example here of we have our generate password and we either forgot or someone commented out the returning of that actual password value. Well, we see that everything is kind of looking correct, but it's saying that it's undefined, even though these things are being updated, it's recalculating the password, but it's coming back as undefined. So one of the things we might check here is we could log out the password. We could certainly do that. Or we could also add an assertion here. So we could assert that our password is not equal to undefined. We might wanna check this to make sure and this function, if it is undefined, we wanna spit out a message to say, this shouldn't be undefined. All right, so now let's go back and check and it's actually triggering the assertion here, which kind of logs out as an error. So we, any condition that we want to check for and then print out an associated message, we can do that here. Another thing that we can do similarly is instead of console log, we can use console.error and say, this should not be undefined. Uh, if we were to uh, do this just like the assert, we'd have to wrap this inside of an if condition to check if password uh, is undefined. So the assert saves us a little bit of time, but just to show you a few more of these, console error will now air this out in a red color. And then we also have the console warn that we can use to log out in a yellow color. So this is how you get those different types of colored messages inside of your console. Now this can be really useful while you're debugging because as you're scrolling through, you can see your errors not just logged out in regular console log, but you can see them in bright red or yellow to make sure it's things that you need to pay attention to. Now, you probably don't wanna actually include those console statements inside of your production application. So this is especially useful for local testing or your backend apps where other people, where your customers are not gonna be able to see your log statements, but you can use them to inspect the things that are going on. All right, so let's go and get rid of those and then let's update our generate password and this stuff uh, should be running. All right, so if we change the link, that should update. Great, that's working. And uh, let's say we want to figure out how long this actual actual password process uh, takes to run. Well, we can do a console.time. So this will start a timer. And then at the end of this, we can do a console.time end. So just in case we wanna see how long this process takes for each one. So the first one is uh, 0 0.0229 something 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 milliseconds and then if we go up it should be something in the same range there so if you're debugging something that is taking a long time or you're trying to figure out what part of your application is taking the longest you could do a couple of time and time ends to be able to track exactly how long that stuff takes all right now let's get into the really fun stuff that's a little more sophisticated but it's not that difficult Let's look into actual debugging. So a lot of us think about debugging in JavaScript, myself included, as just, hey, let me write this console log statement. But there are actually tools around debugging that can really help make this easier. So let's go back to, again, uh, let's comment out the return password in here. And we'll go back to the same problem of we're going to have undefined inside of our function. So one of the things that we can do is, let's say we're wondering if the password is coming back correctly. So we can run a debugger statement in here which means when this runs in the browser, it's gonna actually, you see it did it here, it's gonna start a debugging process inside of, in this case, Google Chrome. It says this is paused in the debugger, and then we can go and actually look at what's going on inside of the application. So what kind of stuff can we look at? We can go and see the code here uh, if we wanted to. We can also see the values of our scope. So we can see password variable here is undefined, which honest, obviously it should not be undefined. So this is a good red flag for us to know hey, when we're generating this password, something's not happening correctly. So we also have a couple of additional tools in here. We can step through the code line by line. So if we click this one, it'll go line by line and kind of show us what line of code we're at. We can also skip to the next function call and we can also just continue to let the application continue to do what it's doing. So this is a great way to stop your code at a specific point. Now the debugger and the tools inside of Google Chrome work really well, but I much prefer a different option for this, which is to use debugging inside of VS Code. So instead of running the debugger command there, what we can do inside of VS Code is set our own breakpoints to have a true debugging experience right inside of our editor. So the way we can set this up is if we go to run and debug, we'll need to create a, uh, a launch JSON file, which VS Code will help do, us for, do for us. And we'll say, we're gonna run this environment inside of Chrome. So it'll go ahead and stub out uh, our debugging configuration for running in Chrome. And then we can say this is running not at port 8080, but at 5500. So we know this thing is running at 5500 in my machine because uh, one, you can see it up here in the URL. 
And I'm using the live server extension in VS Code to be able to do that. So VS Code live server extension in VS Code starts with port 5500 by default. So if we save this now, we have our launch configuration. So on the bottom, there's a launch Chrome against localhost solution. It just kind of shows us what the different configurations are that we have uh, configured. We could also do the command palette and go to debug and scroll down to start debugging. And we can also run the function F5 for this. And it's going to run that configuration. Notice that it opened up a new browser. Here's my desktop in case you've ever been curious. Uh, looks like Chrome didn't shut down, that's fine. So here's our application and it's running against localhost 5500 here, but the browser is now connected to VS Code where that debugging experience I have right inside of my editor. So you can see it stops at this breakpoint that I set. Remember we toggled that on and off. So inside of here, I can do all the same things that I looked at inside of Google Chrome. I can look at my variables. Here's the password. Here's the checkbox values. Here's the link. All these different things I can look at. I can also go step by step. Let's see, step over, we'll go to the next line. The step into will go into a function call if we're calling a function here, and then we can continue here. So we can set this debugging uh, breakpoint, leave it there, then go ahead and run to our return password, save this, which will then trigger a rerun of this application. And now we're back in VS Code again at the same spot where now we can verify that this password has actually been set, which is really, really nice. A couple of additional things we could do. Sometimes you have a lot of data up uh, there that's hard to look at. So if we just set password as a variable we want to watch, we could specifically look for password inside of this watch, which we'll see if there's a password variable inside of the scope that we're in, which is this function, and then show us that value so I don't have to go dig through some of the potentially nested values. So lots of really cool things that you can do inside of VS Code to debug your code with the tools that it has built in. So to sum up, a couple of tips for just mentally debugging. One is to take your time, step away from the computer at times, go take a walk if you need to, but pay really close attention to the error messages that you're getting, pay attention to what line number they're calling out and what exactly that error message is telling you because usually they are fairly specific. And if you don't make it anywhere from there, you can go ask on Stack Overflow. From there, you've got lots of different functions on side of the console or on side, inside of the console object that you can use in addition to log, there's warn and error and table and time and time in and dear, assert, there's account. There's lots of ones that you can use to customize your debugging experience. Next, you have the debugger command, which will trigger debugging inside of your browser. But my personal preference is to use debugging right inside of VS Code because it integrates directly with your code. And now I can be inside of the editor that I'm used to being in while I was writing the code. So those are my tips for debugging JavaScript. Let me know if you think there's anything I missed, what other features or functionality or extensions or tips do you have for people that are debugging? I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.